Hello, good morning, and welcome to our Passion Tide service. I have a passion for chocolate. I have a passion for ice cream and cake. I have a passion, believe it or not, for blancmange. Today, we are thinking of the passion of Jesus. I use the word passion in a different sense. The passion of Jesus focuses on his suffering. And this Passion Tide service is when we think about the last few days of his life. We think about the journey to Jerusalem. We think about the journey to the cross. We think about his sacrifice. So this is one of the most serious services of the Christian year. Many churches have different traditions and one of them to remind people of the sombre occasion that we have here is to veil the cross. It helps to get the message of cross. Jesus, the Son of God, was prepared to sacrifice himself for our sake. And so in this service, you'll hear serious, sombre readings of Jesus' final hours. The music too will be serious, sombre. It's a painful journey that Jesus trod, but the end of the journey is one of joy. The end of the journey is one of victory, as we remember the power of God, the good power of God, is far greater than the power of evil. Welcome to our Passion Tide service. Jesus is handed over to Pontius Pilate and faces Herod. Then the whole multitude of them arose and led him to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, we found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to pay taxes to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ a king. Then Pilate asked him, saying, Are you the king of Jews? He asked him and said, It is as you say. So Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no fault in this man. But they were the more fierce, saying, he stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked if the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Now when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceedingly glad, for he had described for a long time to see him. Because he had heard many things about him and he hoped to see some miracle done by him. Then he questioned him with many words, but Jesus answering him nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. Then Herod, with his men of war, treated him with contempt and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him back to Pilate. Here ends the first lesson. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, triumphed in death on the cross, that he might win life for the world, help us in the power of his victory to triumph over all evil and to glory in his cross alone who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We worship you, O Christ, because for our sake you laid aside your power and glory and clothed yourself in the garment of our humility. 
to live in poverty here on earth and to suffer death upon the cross. Teach us the lessons of true humility and empty our lives of all pride and selfishness, that we may find our joy and fulfilment in serving others in your name and for your sake. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus takes the place of Barabbas. Then Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, said to them, You have brought this man to me as one who misleads the people. And indeed, having examined him in your presence, I have found no fault in this man, and neither did Herod. Therefore I will chastise him and release him. And they all cried out at once, saying, Away with this man, and release us to Barabbas who had been thrown into a prison for murder. Pilate, therefore, wishing to release Jesus, again called out to them. But they shouted, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Then he said to them the third time, Why, what evil has he done? I have found no reason for death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. But they were insistent demanding with loud voices that he be crucified. So Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they requested, and he delivered Jesus to their will. Here ends the second lesson. The King on the Cross. Now, as they led him away, they laid hold of a certain man, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming from the country, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. And a great multitude of the people followed him, and women who also mourned and lamented him. 
But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. There were also two criminals to be put to death. And when they had come to the place they called Calvary, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. And the people stood looking on, but even the rulers with them sneered, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ, the chosen of God. Here ends the third lesson. This is the King of the Jews. The soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine, and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Here ends the fourth lesson.
Jesus dies on the cross. Now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness all over the earth, until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last breath. So, when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God, saying, Certainly, this was a righteous man. And the whole crowd who came together to that site, seeing what had been done, beat their breasts and returned. But all his acquaintances and the women who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance, watching these things. Here ends the fifth lesson. Jesus is buried in Joseph's tomb. Now behold, there was a man named Joseph, a council member, a good and just man. This man went to Pilate. He asked for the dead body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of rock, where no one had ever lain before. 
Then the woman prepared spices and fragrant oils, and they rested on the Sabbath according to the commendation. Here ends the sixth lesson. Jesus is risen. Now, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in 
and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as the women were afraid and bowed their heads to the earth, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Here ends the seventh lesson. We finish the service with the blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.